uh, this morning I'm going to just share with you a, a thought that uh, God spoke to me in my devotion this week as I was, I was uh, spending time with the Lord. It's a very simple message today. Um, I'm not going to woo you with any deep theological understanding that you don't probably already have, but I want to remind you of the goodness of God in your life and how much God really, really, really is crazy about you and how much he is desiring to work for your purpose and for your benefit. Um, and there's the, I titled a message. I don't typically title my message, but I titled the message because it makes a point. And the title of my message today would, today would be the question that stretches your faith. The question that stretches your faith. The question that God sends to you that stretches your faith. And we look in John 6. Uh, Jesus is um, he's, he's coming to the other side of the lake in Galilee. And there's a massive crowd of people following him. And, and they're very attracted by the miracles that Jesus has been doing. And the scripture tells us that Jesus went up on a slope of a hill. And he sat down with his disciples. Now it's approaching the time of the Jewish celebration of the Passover. And there were many pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem in the crowd. And Jesus sat down and he looked out and he saw a massive crowd of people scrambling up the hill for they wanted to be near him. This is not my message, but I want to throw this in. They were following him because miracles were taking place. They were after him because there was something that he was saying that was life changing and transforming their life. When we carry the gospel of the kingdom in our life and miracle signs and wonders follow according to scripture, he said, these signs shall follow those that believe. We will not have to do advertising for church or house church or any other place that we're gathering. People will come because they will be hungry because everybody needs a miracle. I'm glad I got one amen back there. Thank you, Tessie. Everybody needs a miracle. And so they were, these crowds were just coming after Jesus, and they wanted to see and to hear what he had to say. And as Jesus sat down, he looked out, and he saw this massive crowd of people scrambling up the hill, for they wanted to be near him. So he turned to Philip, and he said, Where will we buy enough food to feed these people? Where? He looks at Philip, and he says, Where would we buy enough food to feed these people how many of you ever hosted a group of people coming to your house and you knew they were coming and one thing you did not want to happen is to run out of food come on I know these Italians over here they don't ever run out of food come on uh, my first uh, connection with this group was at a party and boy there was food there and I, I, I've made it a rule around this house when we do th gatherings for this our community that like let's overcook and give it away but let's do not run out of food I can only think of a couple times that we ran out of food I was looking matter of fact last week when we had the barbecue I was I was, went out there and there's only a few sandwiches left and so I didn't eat because I thought we we're gonna run out of food and I didn't know there was a bunch more in the oven but but I, I, I did not don't run out of food that's just bad business don't run out of, do what if you live in South Louisiana there's you should know this don't run out of food you know, it's like having a party and, you know, you run out of food there. Nobody's coming back to your party again. Don't run out of food. And so Jesus asked poor Philip, he says, so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? That just don't seem like a fair question to ask Philip. When you have 5,000 people, men there, and plus women and children, what, what, what are we going to do? And now this is next line sentence just blows me away. He says, now, Jesus already knew what he was about to do, but he said to this to stretch Philip's faith. Jesus already knew what he was going to do, but he asked Philip this question to stretch Philip's faith. And then, the, you know, as the story goes on, that, that Peter saw uh, someone there with a sack lunch, and they broke the lunch, and they fed the multitude, and there was 12 baskets of food left over. 
There are times in our life that Jesus has the answer. He's not ever been a time that Jesus did not have an answer. He was not going, oh, scratch my head. What am I going to do? Oh, there's 5,000 people. We're, we're in a mess. I need some help from, from you, Philip. I need you to come show up, Philip, because I don't know what to do. Phil, Jesus has never been into that predicament. But oftentimes, Jesus asks us questions because he wants to know, do we believe that there is a miracle that can take place that can transform the atmosphere where we're at? And God has always used people to perform a miracle. And I don't have time today to go through all the times that we see miracles taking place. But Jesus oftentimes and most times he engaged. And then he said, I must go away, but I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And, and when I send you the Holy Spirit, he said, greater things shall you see and do. I'm going to fill you with my Holy Spirit so you can become the miracle worker. So that you could become the miracle worker. And so he asked us these questions because he has empowered us to do great things. He asked us these questions to stretch our faith to see if we understand the miracle that's in us. There's sometimes just God asking a simple question can move us and it can provoke us. And sometimes we don't know what to do with it. We, 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 we step back. So we ask, I have to ask this question to you today. Do you have the faith in you to see the miracle that God wants to do? Do you have the faith in you to see the miracle that God wants to do? I take you to the book of Ezekiel 37, and God asks Ezekiel a question. And let me set this up for you just a little bit, because Ezekiel's standing in a valley full of dry bones. He, he wasn't standing in a church where people were asleep. He wasn't standing in a place where there were people that, this is, this is not, uh, th these were dry bones. They didn't have any flesh on them. There was no, there was no blood in their body. That, these were dry bones. Are you hearing what I'm saying? These were skeletons. There was no stench in the air of the death. He was standing in the valley of dry bones. And God said to Ezekiel, can these bones live? <laughs> Now, I'm just going to be honest with you for just a moment. I might would have said, God, I'm not sure I want these bones to live. <laughs> that might be a little strange, a little weird, a little off, God. I, I don't know if I want these bones to live. I, I don't know. You're asking me, and I'm looking at the situation, and I, I'm not sure, God, of the, the question that you're asking me. When I look at my surroundings and I look at, 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 at the circumstances I'm in, I'm not sure, God, that I understand the question you're asking me. Because from my point of view, from a scientific point of view, from, from my natural thinking, absolutely not, God. These bones are dead and gone and dried up. But I love Ezekiel's answer because his answer was not that. His answer was, oh, oh, Lord, you know. <laughs> Lord, you know. There's sometimes in our life we may not have the answer to the question, but we can believe that he knows. And the answer should be, oh, Lord, you know. And, Lord, I'm going to step into the promise that you say, you, that you're trying to say. I'm, you said you'll be with us. You'll take care of us. You'll do all these things. So, God, you know my circumstances. I, I'm going to trust you, God, that, to believe that there is a miracle that only you can do, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step into the miracle with you. Oh, oh, Lord, you know. You know. And in Matthew, the disciples were at a sea, and, and there was a ship, and it was being tossed to and fro, and, and they, were, they were doing what all of us do in the natural. They began to just get rid of everything. You know, they were, they were taking everything that was on the ship, and they were throwing it, trying to lighten the load, and they were throwing things off the ship, and they're, all their freight and everything, trying to lighten the load and fix the problem. And I know oftentimes in my life, that's what I do. I start trying to fix the problem, fix the problem. I got to fix the problem. Well, there's a problem facing me. Well, let me, let me think, how can I fix this? Well, I, I need to get rid of this. I need to do this. I need to maneuver here. I got to get this done. I got to do that. I got to work this out. And it's been said several times this morning through both of our services. There comes a place in our life that we don't need to try to work it out. We need to surrender. 
We don't need to try to fix the problem. We don't need to try to do it with our own ability. And, and, and one of the hardest things for us to do as, as, as mankind is, is to surrender ourselves and say, okay, God, this is beyond me, and, and it's bigger than me, and God, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to surrender to you, God, because, because here's the deal. I've got rid of all of this stuff, and I'm still in the same storm. I've done all of this work. I've, I've done all of this trying to save myself, and I'm still in the same storm. I'm still in the same situation. I, I'm still the same wave, same wind, same problem. And Jesus comes to the bow of the ship after they have done all that they could do. They call on Jesus, and Jesus asks them this simple question, where's your faith? Where's your faith? Because you've been with me all of this time and you've seen all of these miracles take place. But the moment you get in a place of danger and fear and you look around you, you can't see nothing but dead bones. You can't see nothing but waves. You can't see nothing but catastrophe. You can't see nothing but problems. And he asked the question, where is your faith? And they didn't have an answer to that. But Jesus then said, peace be still. And they said, well, what is this man that even he can speak to the seas and they obey? There's God's wanting to work in our, our midst. He's wanting to change our life. He's wanting to help us along our way. But we have to realize that sometimes the question is, oh, Lord, you know, oh, Lord, I believe and when we're looking at the impossibilities of our life and it seems like there is no way out and we're surrounded on every side, then the question is when God sends the question, is there hope? Can you change the situation? Now, it's easy to have faith when there's nothing to lose. You know, I have faith with someone else. You know, you could pray for someone else. Oh, God bless them. I pray, God, that you heal them. I, I feel pretty good while I'm praying for them. You know, I'm, I'm not feeling bad. So, God, heal them, touch them, Lord. God, fix their situation. Boy, we have faith. We can get up and preach, man, and, and, and prophesy and, and preach to others. And we can go about our life and we can encourage others. And then all of a sudden, here comes a storm in our life. Here, here it comes. It knocks our head off. Boom. And we're like, Okay, so what now, God? The th same things we were preaching and all the, the prophecy and all the faith and all that out the window and we're throwing everything overboard. Ah, what are we gonna do, God? And we forget the same God that spoke these things before is the same God standing in the midst of our storm and he's asking us the question, do you believe that all things are possible to them that believe? It's easy to have faith when you got nothing to lose. But when you're facing the impossibilities and your faith is, begins to get stretched, stretched, pulled, pulled on every side. And all you can see is, uh, 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 is the Red Sea in front of you, a mountain on either side of you and an army coming to destroy you behind you. Then you've got to trust God to step into the miracle to step into the place where God says, I'm going to take care of this for you. you got to believe there has to be that place of great faith. We go back and look at Ezekiel's story, and he's, he turns to Ezekiel, and he says, okay, Ezekiel, prophesy. I need you to prophesy, Ezekiel. Well, but, but prophesy, yeah, to those bones. You said, you said, you know, Lord, I'm telling you to prophesy. There's sometimes I don't, I don't see a way out, but I got to prophesy. I got to speak the word over it, even when I don't even understand it. I got to speak the word over it. And sometimes it feels like you're just blabbing and grabbing and hoping. And that's okay, because sometimes we speak a word of faith. I want to just stop here for just a minute, because I feel like I need to explain it. We, we can have a word of faith that comes from our understanding of who he is, not having any idea whether he's going to do it or not. Faith is a substance thing hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I speak the word of faith. And when I speak the word of faith, then I begin to prophesy those things. Then it's left up to God to do the miracle. But when we don't prophesy and we don't speak the word of faith, don't expect there to be a change. Are you with me this morning? So sometimes we're prophesying and we're speaking a word of faith and we're not really sure what's going to happen. You know what? Let's just go ahead and prophesy and let's speak the word of faith according to his word and let God work out the details. Can I get a better amen this morning? Can I get a better amen? So he says prophesy to these bones. 
And Ezekiel began to prophesy something began to happen. The, the foot bone connected to the leg bone and the leg bone connected to the hip bone. And probably Ezekiel was going, oh, my God, what's happening here? You prophesied a miracle and now the miracle's taking place. Oftentimes we'll prophesy something, we'll believe something, we'll speak a word of faith. I was with somebody the other day and they said, I prayed for something that actually happened. Like, whoa, whoa, wow, because we, we, we pray and we believe and then God comes through and we're, we should be amazed by the greatness of God. And every time he shows up in our life, in Mark 11, it was in the morning, the scripture says, and they were passing by the fig tree and Jesus spoke to it and it was completely withered from its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, teacher, look, that is the fig tree that you cursed and it's now shriveled up and died. And Jesus replied, let the faith of God be in you. Let the faith of God be in you. He said, the same faith that I had when I walked by this, this tree and I spoke to this tree, he said, let that same faith be in you. In other words, this is not just for me to do. I've called you to do the same thing. Let that faith be in you to speak to that situation, to speak that, to that circumstance, and let that same faith of God that's in me be in you so that you can do miracles too. The scripture goes on to say, listen to the truth, I speak to you. If someone says to the mountain with great faith, having no doubt, mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the midst of the sea and, and believes that what he says, it will happen and it will be done. I want to ask you this morning, do you have the faith to believe, to speak to the mountains and the circumstances in your life and believe God is coming through for you the moment that you begin to speak it? And sometimes I don't see it working. Sometimes I don't feel it working. Sometimes it's not about what I see or about, man, if we go by what we see and what we feel, we'll never have a miracle. But sometimes it's just absolute faith. I can't see God working. I can't even feel God working. I don't even feel God today. I don't have it since God in this place right now. But I have the faith to believe that he said that I will never leave you or forsake you. And, that, and he ha I have the faith to believe that his promises are yea and amen. So I'm speaking to something that I don't feel or I even see. I have the faith to believe it. I'm stepping into the miracle that's been promised to me by God through his word. And I'm not going to believe anything other than that, no matter what I feel, no matter what I see. Because I know he's my way maker. He's my promise keeper. And he's going to come through every time. I love the story of Matthew, two blind men following Jesus, begging for mercy. And uh, I want a couple of you guys come up here. Come, Alejandro, you and Matt come up here. I need some blind guys. Come on up here with me up here, blind guys. These blind guys are, are following Jesus. And they're crying out, mercy, mercy, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Mercy, mercy. mercy. Have mercy. I'm blind. Oh, you're blind. It's for real now. <laughs> have mercy. Have mercy on me, Lord. I mean, just think about this. They're blind guys. Stumbling around, got their cane. I wish I had a couple of cane. Have mercy, oh son of David, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. And Jesus turns around and says, what is it that you want from me? What? I mean, come on, Jesus. It's pretty obvious. They're blind. And they're crying, have mercy upon me. And you're going to turn around and say, the, the God of the universe here, you're going to turn and say, what is it that you want from me? What is it that you need? I, I guess it would have been funny if one of them said, well, I have a cold. <laughs> but it was pretty obvious that they were, they were in the middle of a bunch of miracles taking place. And they were blind. And they turn and they say, what is it that you want from me? I think that's ironic. But here's the deal. Jesus, the scripture said that Jesus did not perform the miracle until they spoke specifically what they needed. Oh, come on. Let me preach a little bit in this house today. There's sometimes you're saying, God, you know what I need. And God's saying, I need you to tell me what you need. I don't need you to be vague. And I don't need you to, because sometimes we're vague with God because we don't have enough faith to say, God, this is what I need. We're afraid if we say, God, I'm blind and I need to see this is what I need and it doesn't take place, we're going to be heartbroken or we're going to be hurt. Or we're but listen, there comes a time we need to have the faith to say, God, I'm going to call out what I need. I need a miracle in my marriage. I need a miracle in my finances. I need a miracle in my sickness. I need a miracle in these particular places of my life. God, I need a miracle here. 
This is what I need, Lord. And I'm speaking it with faith, knowing that you're well able to perform that miracle. Thank you, guys. But well able to perform the miracle that I need. Sometimes it involves a question that seems obvious. Sometimes it involves a question from God that feels almost like, really, God? I mean, you see me in my situation? But God's wanting you to speak it with your mouth. Speak it with your mouth. Speak, out of your mouth comes the miracle. God, this is what I need. Our miracle's in our mouth, but the question is, do we have the faith to speak it? Do we have the conviction to speak it? Do we have the heart to speak it? And when we do, this is what happens. Our eyes begin to see it. I was reading a thing the other day from, I uh, uh, can't think of his name right now, off Blaze TV, uh, Glenn Beck. And he was, telling, he was telling how that we're living in a world where all, all these things are changing, where they can actually digitally form a face that is actually not a real face. It's, it, 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 look, it would look like on film or like if you videoed a real person speaking and it, it would be actually completely made up. There's not a real person. And that person they could then give a voice to that would sound like another person. So they could make a face that looked like Donald Trump and, they could, and then they could make that face say what they wanted it to say and the sound like Donald Trump. And so therefore you would believe whatever you saw because that's how we are. What we see is what we believe. And so he was set, went on to say that they took some images of driving down a road and, 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 they, and they actually in real time changed that from winter to spring. And uh, well, they asked the question, one was winter and one was spring. And so everybody picked the spring picture. They thought they could change it much easier from this winter look and add the leaves and the trees and the, and, and the blooms. But in actuality, they took the spring and they made it look like winter in real time. And we're living in a world where there's so much doubt and so people so doubtful what they hear, what they see, and what they believe. And I'm going to tell you something this morning. There's nothing that the devil would want to do more than to steal your belief that God is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And that his promises are yes and amen. And so we can never get trapped into this whole idea of our faith being only what I can see. Or only what I, only what I can put my hands on. But sometimes our faith has to reach out of what we see. And what, what's going on around us and say because you said it God. Even though I don't see it God. Even though I don't feel it God. Even though I don't know how this is going to happen. I believe that your word is true to me Lord. And I'm going to Speak with my mouth the promises that you've already declared. And I'm going to prophesy these things that are in your word over my life. Worship team, you can come. I want to finish today with a story of our pastor in Acuna. We went there last year. I guess it was around Christmas time. And uh, he took us out on a piece of property. And on that piece of property, he uh, was so excited because there was a location that we had been feeding the elderly in and the, the widows in for several years. And, and the guy that owned the land had donated it to us, but he had decided to sell the property uh, because there was a lot of growth in the area. And he, so we had no place to meet. And so Pastor had went on, Pastor Oscar had went on a, a search for a piece of property and he had found this piece of property that he felt like God had led him to. And he took me out to this piece of property, and, and uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, I, I was looking at this piece of property, and I was saying, man, this is going to take a lot of work. This is going to take a lot of work because this piece of property went from probably, you know, from this elevation, it dropped off according to where he was going to build the building, maybe 10 or 15 feet. And I was thinking, that's going to take a lot of dirt. That's going to take a lot of to, to, to get this level, it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. And so um, put that first picture up there. So we were standing on this piece of property, and this is what it looked like. It was just a big dirt hill that started digging the trenches out. You could see the people lined up around there, and we were praying over this piece of property. And, and in, my not, in my mind, I was praying. I was believing. Just leave that picture up. I was praying and I was saying, God, I, I thank you, Lord. And well, well I, let me back up just a second. I asked pastor, I said, pastor, I said, so do you have funds to build this building? How, how, how is this going to happen? 
And he reached down in the dirt and he picked up a handful of dirt. And with his broken English, he said, by faith, brother, by faith. And he let the dirt fall out of his hand. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I was saying, oh, by faith, it's going to take a lot of money. <laughs> by faith, it's going to take a lot of dirt. And I'm looking, I have just enough knowledge of building to know that this is not going to be like an easy task, even in Mexico. But I felt his passion in his heart. I said, how much money do you have, Pastor? He said, all I need, none of it yet, but all I need. <laughs> so we prayed over that, that property that day. And I left there and I was like, okay, God, your will be done. And we start sewing in from this house and we start, I started calling friends and, and we gathered up some money and we got back in a, a few months and there was a slab there and it had they had built the foundational wall and filled it with dirt some 80 something truckloads of dirt up uh, not not little dump trucks but 18 wheelers and uh, so we we got there and and there was a slab and the foundation was built and I said pastor man I can't believe what all you got done he said yeah we're just waiting for God for the next money so we can buy the blocks to start building and so a few months we went back and you can show the next pick and the box were going up and I said pastor where'd you get the money to pay for this he said God's a supplier of all of our needs and so we prayed over the building again we went back this last time and Angela was telling you earlier today we, it was a labor of love this last trip there and we painted this building well, when we got there, it was a concrete building, just concrete blocks that had been cemented over, and the roof was on. And we got there, and that was our project. And, man, I'll tell you, our team went, went after it, man. There was no paint on the walls inside or out. And uh, so we, we started working, and this is the, what we left there a few weeks ago. And I have to be honest with you, I didn't have that much faith. <laughs> and the Lord started convicting my heart. Because that afternoon after we painted that, our team went out in this little neighborhood, it's not a little neighborhood, but this neighborhood, and in 15 minutes there were 70 kids that were getting ministered to and the gospel was being preached in this little building that we painted. Now it was designed for the widow's ministry to feed the widow's three days a week and it was designed for our aftercare program but because the passion of a man of God who said this God can these bones live we're not going to let our widows go without God can these bones live we're going to believe God we're going to roll away the stone God you're going to raise the dead God you're going to do the miracle we're believing it God that this community now is calling on him and they're showing up to work people that don't even go to the church they're excited and now they say now pastor when are we going to start the church because they want a church service there now because somebody was willing to say yes. And so I was so convicted, and I have to be honest with you, because I, I know we've talked about building, and our board has talked about building, and we've talked about all of these things. But then I come back, and I, I start doing what we do. I get out pen and paper, and I get out, and I get a spreadsheet out, and I look at the income, and I look at the budget, and I look at this, and I look at that, and about... An hour into that, I've talked myself out of a miracle. I think the greatest problem we have to the kingdom of God is between our two ears. And all of our faith and all of what we do, we try to process through this mind, this carnal mind, human thinking. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that we are just fly by the seat of the pants. But I am saying when God gives us a word that there's times that we have to step out of the boat. We have to step out in faith. That We have to step out for the miracle that God's wanting to do in your life. Don't get nervous. I'm not fixing to do a fundraiser for a building program. <laughs> this message to you, this is to you today. 
This message is to you today about the miracle that God's wanting to do in your life, about the breakthrough that God's wanting to do in your life, about the situation that you're facing in your life, about maybe you got kids today that are not serving the Lord and you've gone weary with praying. You've grown weary because you haven't seen the miracle take place. I'm going to ask you to go back and ask God, did God give you a promise? Did God give you a word? Did God speak to your heart? Then stand on that word until it comes to pass. I'm saying sometimes all you have is dirt. All you have is a ditch. All you have is, is a, a word from God for, for something. Then you just have to believe God for it. And at the end of this year, they'll move into that church and they won't owe one single dime. God wants to do a miracle in your life. And at the end of the day, it really honestly costs you nothing. He said, what's well, going to cost? No, no, it really didn't cost you anything. He paid the price on Calvary for your miracle already. It's really costing you nothing but to step into the promise of God. It's the only thing it's going to cost you is to step out of that place of fear and to step out of that place of doubt and say, God, if you did it for them, if you did it for her, if you did it for him, then you could do it for me because, God, you love me like everybody else. And I'm believing you, God for the miracle, for the miracle in my life. I've asked our band to come back and they're gonna sing this song again. I want you to just bring it. I don't want you, don't come in light, come in big, go strong.